In this video, we're going to talk about cracks that appear in concrete before it even gets hard. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm a concrete cowboy. So why do cracks happen? Well, when the tensile stress is greater than the tensile capacity, concrete cracks. It's not very strong in tension. And there's two different periods that we usually talk about this. And in this video, we're gonna talk about from placement of the concrete till about six hours. And we're gonna talk specifically about plastic shrinkage cracking and plastic settlement cracking. Now these both are called plastic because the concrete is not set. The concrete is not hard yet. It's still hydrating, it's still wet. So plastic shrinkage cracking is caused from water loss at the surface of concrete before the concrete is set. This is a picture of what it looks like. These parallel cracks, okay, on the surface of, of the concrete, they're usually not very deep. And this is why it happens. After we make a concrete slab, we finished it, and it's not hardened yet, it's still hydrating, the aggregate and the binder is gonna try to go to the bottom. And the water is gonna go to the top. Why does this happen? Because the aggregate and binder is much heavier, has a much higher specific gravity or density than the water does. And this is called bleeding. All concrete does it, some just does it more than others. And when concrete bleeds, you get a thin layer of this water on the surface. And over time, as the wind blows and the sun comes beating down on the top, that layer will actually evaporate off. And if the evaporation rate exceeds the rate of bleeding, then your concrete's gonna dry and it's gonna shrink at the surface. But the inside, it doesn't dry, it doesn't shrink, it just stays there. And this is just like making gravy. You know what I'm talking about? When you make gravy for Thanksgiving or your favorite gravy holiday, right? You get that thin layer on the surface of the gravy. You have to kind of break up and stir over and over again. That's this layer. That's what I'm talking about. And that gravy layer when it cracks is just like the cracking, the plastic shrinkage cracking in concrete. These cracks appear in the plastic. They're not hardened, the plastic or wet surface of the concrete. So what are the things that impact plastic shrinkage? Well, if let's just talk about the concrete first. Things will get worse when we have lower amounts of water in our concrete. We have higher amounts of paste. That's the binder and the water together because that is what shrinks. When our binder has a high amounts of fines, very, very, very small material, they'll want to absorb our water and that water won't be available to bleed. When we have high amounts of SEMs like fly ash and slag or silica fume, the fly ash and slag will delay set and it makes it more likely for this to happen. Silica fume with that high fineness sucks up all the water and makes this more likely to happen. And if we finish and strike the concrete off very, very early, it will give it a longer period when this can happen to it. But it's not just about the concrete. It's also about the weather. Things will get worse when your air temperature is higher, when your relative humidity is lower, when your concrete temperature is higher, when the wind speed is higher and the sun exposure. Think about the things you worry about when you get like chapped lips or a sunburn. That is the exact same thing you have to worry about with your concrete in this plastic shrinkage cracking. So what can you do about this? Well, you can build windbreaks. You can shade the surface. You can fog or spray the surface to try to keep it cool. You can make your pores at night. You could actually redesign your concrete mixture. That would be a great idea. Or you can actually use plastic fibers. Now, plastic fibers don't actually hold the concrete together during this time period. Okay, instead, they act as like a channel where water can move from the inside to the surface of the concrete once it needs it. And you can be careful when you pour. And as engineers, we can be very, very nerdy and come up with all kinds of crazy equations to try to explain this. And we've done it with this thing called a nomograph. This is pretty crazy. You come in here and you start at this point. 
and you look up the temperature in the air and you start out, maybe it's eight degrees. And then you come up till you hit your relative humidity. In this example, it may be about 50%. And then you come over till you find your concrete temperature. In this example, it's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you come down until you hit your wind velocity. That's around 12 miles per hour. And then you come over until you hit something called your rate of evaporation. Now, our concrete forefathers and foremothers got together and they drew a line in the rate of ev evaporation sand. There's lots of people that argue about this line and they wonder if it's maybe not right. And does it really apply for every concrete mixture? No, but they drew a line in the sand. And they said when you have about 0.25 pounds per square foot per hour or more, then you have a concern for cracking. And if you have less than that, you have less of a concern for cracking. Notice the lawyer-like wording here, less of a concern for cracking, because cracking still may happen. But a rule of thumb, if you don't like math, you don't like graphs, you don't like nomographs, the rule of thumb is if your wind speed is less than 10 miles per hour, your relative humidity is above 50%, your concrete temperature is below 85 degrees Fahrenheit and your air temperature is less than 80 degrees Fahrenheit, you are gonna be okay. The problem is there's only around 20 to 30 days out of the year. You know those beautiful days where you don't ever wanna pour concrete anyway? That is the days when this seems to be most likely. These other days seem to be more challenging. Now, another type of cracking is called plastic settlement cracking. They're cracking from concrete settlement either over aggregate or over rebar. Let me explain what I'm talking about. This is what some of it looks like. And you see these cracks that are forming. They seem to be kind of perpendicular to one another. They're actually follow the pattern of the rebar inside the concrete. Yep. How does this work? Well, one, one cause is when the concrete settles and the rebar does not. And this causes the cracks above the rebar. I'm trying to show it in this picture below. The concrete is going down, but the rebar, mm, 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 not moving. It holds it there, it causes a crack, it causes a void. And if we have outside chemicals, it has direct exposure to the reinforcing steel. Not good. But this can also happen over aggregates. This is called aggregate shadowing. See these little white spots? These are cracks, actually, where, again, the paste is moving down and the aggregates are holding steady, and it causes us cracking above it. This can also happen if your formwork is not rigidly supported. If your formwork moves a little bit, eh, while the concrete's still wet, eh, the concrete drops a little bit and it causes this cracking to happen. So how do you avoid this? Well, you can have very, very stiff formwork. You can have a very stable subgrade, good concrete consolidation, low amounts of segregation, and lower amounts of slump. So what do you do? What if you're on the job and you see this has happened? You're like, crack, I see a crack. If the concrete's not set, then baby, you get back out there and you refinish the surface. You get your float back out there and you work it and work it and work it and you try to close those cracks back up. Okay, and you can. You can make them disappear on the surface. Be careful because as the cracks may be deeper, what am I talking about? If we zoomed way in, that crack may still be there. You might have closed that top part, but that crack may still be there. So be careful, be careful. So in summary, you can stop plastic shrinkage and settlement cracking if you are prepared, if you design your concrete correctly, if you pay attention to your weather and your forms and your construction processes, you can avoid these types of cracks. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and let me know, have you ever seen these type of cracks on the job? I bet you might. Take care, everybody. Bye.